Is the Biden infrastructure bill about social structural control? This is a topic report. And this is the first story here. The first, well, the top story that we're going to talk about here is everything is infrastructure to a party that seeks to dominate your life. And this is a federal, the Federalist. I didn't write that headline, but I got to say that's a really, really excellent headline. That pretty much says it all. And this is written by Gabe Kaminsky. Gabe, I don't know if you wrote the title, but if you did, good job, sir. Good job. Whoever wrote the title, that really encapsulated exactly what's going on here. The Biden administration unveiled a roughly $2.25 trillion infrastructure plan in Pittsburgh last week, dubbed the American Jobs Plan. The initiative would run for eight years and allocate yet more money the U.S. government does not have to expand the role of government at the expense of the American people. And really at the expense of, of anybody who, who values any type of uh, uh, self and local autonomy. The, let's see, Senator Christian Gillibrand, who dropped out of the 2020 presidential race after polling less than 1%, I gotta add that little dig in there, uh, tweeted her delusions about what constitutes infrastructure. Paid leave is infrastructure. Child care is infrastructure. Caregiving is infrastructure. This is the kind of uh, post-structuralist, well, post-structuralist world in which they basically, they post-structuralize everyone else out of existence. Meanwhile, they continue to act as if you can actually... See, structuralism, structuralism is the, it, it comes from, well, uh, abbreviated version here probably poorly language theory in essence that uh, language is really to be understood within the structure of the whole and the lung is the structure and parole is the individual expression in order to understand parole you have to understand lung and so it knows it gave this notion of understanding the world means you have to understand it structurally and in and now initially the structuralists were more about the here and then now structure like the, the the context of the time in front of us post structuralists come along and and they say basically it's it's everything everything is interconnected all of history is connected and you have to consider all of it and then derrida says you know uh, that's all true but if you do that you end up with nothing you can't really communicate effectively everything is unfathomable unknowable but they'll do that 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 nihilistic aspect of post structuralism to attack whatever it is that they want to replace meanwhile they'll act more like structuralist in the sense that they'll give you the delusion that somehow they can understand how it's all interconnected. So if everything is inter interconnected, then everything is infrastructure. And so from a political perspective, that means everything's fair game. Look at, uh, I mean, if everything is infrastructure, then we have a little little provision there about, uh, oh, what is it, the Commerce Clause? That Commerce Clause has already been blown open over and over and over again. Now the Commerce Clause means everything is on the table. Every string is, everything is infrastructure. Everything is connected to the, to, to the, to the good of the whole, the well-being, whatever expression you want to use. So, so that's essentially where they're coming from and the justification, the quote-unquote justification that they're using. And there's no use to try to counter them with facts and logic and counter philosophies their own post-structuralist philosophers that have argued from the beginning that if you try to artificially decentralize well artificially create non-unity which is what they're trying they're trying for absolute diversity the the standard of absolute diversity is itself a unity and it's a unity that you have to impose coercively so you you end up creating a totalitarian uh, uh, regime, which is a lot of post-structuralists themselves have warned about. Uh, but never mind that. They won't listen to that. What they will listen to, well, they won't listen to, but they'll just have to deal with it. They'll try and fail, is they'll listen to human beings that have the ability to grow their own food in their own homes. They'll listen to human beings that can say, when you say, we're going to turn off the lights, go, that's fine, we got our own. When they say, well, we're going to take you off our platforms, go, that's fine, we got our own platforms. When you have the ability to, to to pay yourselves between yourselves crypt through cryptocurrency that can't be tracked, for instance, then, then they're going to have to suddenly uh, play nice with you. Until then, it doesn't really matter. You, you really can't call them hypocrites. They're not hypocrites. They're doing exactly what they do within the frame of, of their belief system, which is they're the angels, you're the demons. They have special Gnostic knowledge that they can't be held accountable by your system is unknowable and makes no sense and it's fundamentally murdering people there you go